Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are here to talk some sister wives, newsworthy items. Yes. And then we're going to get into the latest episode of Welcome to Plathville. Boring. A little bit boring, but yeah. there were some good things that we want to get little into. Little tidbits. Before we do all of that, we do have to warn you to please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say a lot of bad words, although I've been trying to tone it down. I don't I've know if noticed. noticed. Have you noticed? Yeah, I have. Oh my God, thank you. <laughs> but we do say a lot of bad words. Yeah. We have stupid opinions. And so if you're one of them sensitive people or raccoons, why are you here? You might want to find yourself another dumpster. Bye. But if you're down to party and talk about all these weirdos, mm -hmm. welcome to this dumpster. And if you are down to party with us, be sure to follow us on instagram at reality tv cringe and join us on patreon patreon.com slash reality tv cringe that's where the real party's at okay yes and we're gonna start watching or reacting to smothered smothered season one we're starting at season one i am shocked that there are five five seasons five. Of smothered yes and these people are all crazy absolutely insane that is how i like them yep so we're gonna be starting that i think sometime in october yeah we always have some good content on the patreon honey we do. now if you are watching on on YouTube, please don't forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because everything you do truly does help us in the algorithm. And so thank you in advance. Thank you. Okay, so before we get into Welcome to Plathville, mm -hmm. I did want to talk a little bit about some Sister Wives stuff that's happening in the universe. Please. Because of course, Sister Wives season 19 is... What, Sunday? Yes. It's not Monday. It's Sunday, Sunday, right? Sunday, bitch. Oh, my gosh. I am so excited. Me too. So I thought we'd cover some of these news items and get to talking a little. Okay. The first one has to do with your favorite and mine, McKelty. Oh, my God. This bitch. McKelty, who was kind of the last of the children besides Robin's kids, who still had some kind of a functioning relationship with Cody and Robin. Yes. And she would still, from time to time, defend cody and robin and we were all asking ourselves why, why? literally why? why so i don't know if you remember but a couple of months ago she said something on her patreon about cody not reaching out to her for her birthday i did remember that yeah i think her birthday happened after garrison's funeral mm. and so this might make sense in just a moment okay apparently somebody on mckelty and tony's patreon made some kind of a comment saying that they were lying about their relationship with cody and robin and so this is what McKelty wrote in a comment in reply. Ooh. She says, we try very hard to say what we can while respecting our families and our relationships. We do not lie. To give you some insights, it is true we have always been super supportive of Robin. And yes, lately, it may seem as that has changed. There are things that happened during the recent funeral that are the reason for that. We won't be talking about these events. So you're not totally wrong. And anywho, thanks for supporting and watching. We hope this helps a little bit. I hate how they're so cryptic. Yeah. Like, just fucking tell us. Yeah. But maybe it's because it's going to be on the season. Like, maybe we'll see what happened a little bit. I just highly doubt it. I doubt it, too. We're going to be seeing last year's footage. Right. So, but what do you think it was that they did? Well... I don't know. The most conspicuous thing for me that came out of the funeral where it concerns Robin is that her adult kids were not there. Yeah. I don't believe Dayton, Brianna, and Aurora showed up. I'm not sure why they wouldn't other than Robin and possibly Cody saying, you're too tender hearted mm. or having made those kids feel like they're not a part of the family. Maybe the kids are just like, well, we're not a part of the family, so we're not going to go which is really unfortunate. Mm -hmm. And maybe that has something to do with why McKelty was upset and or maybe that is kind of what allowed the veils to fall and have her see Robin for who she was. Just because the kids weren't there? Maybe. For me, personally, that's a huge 
deal. I don't want to say it's offensive. I, I personally take offense to the fact that those kids weren't there. They are adults now. Yeah. They're not little minor children. They could have in their own agency made the decision to go because they had a relationship of their own with Garrison. Right. But that's the kids that's not Robin. Unless Robin had something to do with keeping the kids away and or unless Robin said something during the funeral or maybe like I'm just making shit up for real yeah but maybe she was jockeying for position because if you recall she was sitting up there with Janelle and with Cody right in the front pew during the funeral and I'm like Robin why are you there I guess maybe because Cody was there but why is Robin there like she's She's the cudgel. She's the issue. She's the problem for so many of these kids. Yeah. And she knows it after that chat, right? Oh, for sure. But I wonder if it's like on Cody and Robin's part. Like, I wonder if they were making some comments or something or like made the whole funeral about themselves and their emotions when they really should be there for like Janelle. And like, I mean, I guess Cody because Cody was his dad and stuff. But like, I just wonder if she said some shit. Maybe that's why McKelty's pissed off at her. I mean, good. Finally. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you're on the same page with, as literally everybody else in the world, McKelty. Right. So, but I also feel bad because like she's, now it's like, oh, okay, I wanted a relationship with my dad. She probably was tolerating Robin or trying to kiss up to her so she could have a relationship with her dad. Now she doesn't get to have either one. That sucks. Yeah, I don't know if that relationship was so innocent on McKelty's part. Like, mm. I just remember how Christine felt when McKelty told Robin about her twin pregnancy before right. she told her own mother. And there were just some things that McKelty did that I thought were pretty tone deaf and or outright hurtful yeah. to her family and to her mother. And I'm like, why Like, is Cody giving you money? I mean, I know that Tony and McKelty actually filmed with Cody and Robin. And so maybe that's something that they wanted to be able to do. And so they kept that relationship going. I don't know. This is all speculation. Um, and insofar as McKelty is Cody's child, yeah, it's sad. Yeah. And she's moved away now. They sold their house in Utah. Now they're in North Carolina. But I do think it's very interesting that she made this comment. And it's probably way bigger of a deal than she's playing it off to be. Oh, for sure. But that's why I'm wondering, like, if it's going to be on the show. Like, maybe she just can't say anything because it would be a spoiler because it's going to be, like, the biggest thing that happened on the show, you know, besides the wives leaving. So I don't know. I just wish they would stop being so fucking cryptic. Yeah, me as well. Please. Yeah, we have to do all of the work for them. We've got to always crack out our monocles and figure Every it out. Every time. Lord Jesus. Okay, next thing I wanted mm -hmm. to talk about was a blind item on Crazy Days and Nights, which is a website where they release all this information about celebrities and reality TV stars and okay. such without actually telling people who it's about. So people guess. Uh. So this was one of these blind items. It reads as follows. Speaking of family reality shows, the patriarch of this family and his shopaholic wife have been digging into trust accounts to fuel their shopping addiction. The patriarch is also getting ready for divorce and has already found a woman nearly three decades younger than him who is willing to be his wife. No way. <laughs> and so that's, no way. My question is like, do we believe any part of that do we believe none of that what do you think i mean i don't believe the part that he could find a woman three decades younger than him to fuck him or date him nobody would know. want to date i him. think people really want to be on television i think people really <sighs> want to be famous and there's a lot some people will do to get that fame that's cringe af but i do believe the shopaholic thing yeah, i could I totally see some shit like that but trust funds like what kind of trusts were set up well maybe they set up trusts for like kids or do we think that they did well, that i don't know i mean they could have said so but then they could have been dipping into it this whole entire time or like hmm. family trusts or yeah i'm wondering if they're calling the llc or the the global mm. family fund yeah a trust as mm. opposed to the llc yeah and that it's starting to come out and it's starting to be leaked. And by whom, I don't know. But it's starting to be leaked that he had his fingers in that honeypot. Oh, 
my god i mean we've been knowing yeah like we saw their house go up for sale Mm -hmm. and we saw all their bullshit in that house that's thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars right so yeah they have been (coughs) dipping into it Mm -hmm. they've totally been laundering money so i mean i believe that i believe that their financial situation is way worse than what we think it is that's why cody's on cameo (laughs) <laughs> that's right. why robin and them are selling their house which is why i have a really hard time believing that they are upgrading into a four million dollar mm-hmm. home in flagstaff like i just find that so hard to believe and if they are then yes there's some sort of funny money that's happening in this family and they've yeah. been siphoning it for quite some time definitely i agree yeah i know there was another blind item on crazy days and nights probably a week before this one which in effect i didn't actually pull it because i i don't believe it and it's actually pretty unseemly but it basically implied that cody was dating aurora Ew. and that it was aurora his stepdaughter that was going to be his next wife that's disgusting yeah it was pretty obvious that that's what the website was implying but i'm like that cannot be right but that's of fucking course not. vile of course not that has to be fake yeah i hope that's fake holy shit yeah that would be so bad. I did see that. Some people posted it around the internet. And a lot of people got pissed off that anybody would even suggest that that's possible. Yeah. But I mean, this is Cody Brown. And we're not above calling Cody Brown out for his narcissistic poisonous bullshit. Sure. And while I don't think that that would happen, if it did happen, would I be shocked? I mean, yes, but I mean, no. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I agree. But no. (laughs) Yeah. And the last thing we wanted to talk about is kind of a positive thing. Mm -hmm. Recently, I don't know if you've noticed, but the Mary Brown has lost a lot of weight. Now, there's always some online publication writing an article about how skinny Janelle is and how skinny Christina is. And I look and I'm like, they look the same. (laughs) They look exactly the same. Yeah. But I saw some of these articles about Mary and I went and checked it out. And you know what? Mary has lost a lot of weight. I would say probably like, what, 70 pounds? Yeah. Or 180 pounds like Cody Brown. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah. So I just think she looks fantastic she looks so much happier like literally i am happy for her i am happy as well get you a butch lesbian and or man on a motorcycle get that box eight that would be so great (laughs) (laughs) we would love that for her but i mean it's not just her body being slimmer it's just her vibe yeah vibe vibe check. Check. it's her energy like she really does seem like she, she's in such a better place yes and i know i think she's renovating the airbnb mm-hmm. so that's out of commission for a little while but she's still having her little halloween thing that she does on a yearly basis she's got her friends around her she's looking great she's traveling she's doing her ain't shit bullshit worthy up sem- seminars but go get your bag i'm happy I mean, for you it seems like she's actually taking her advice now mm-hmm. she's hashtag worthying up yes so that's great so we love to see it we do love to see it congratulations oh mary my brown God, congrats all right that's all i have on the sister wives that was good yeah i can't wait for i am ready week. for sunday oh my god it's gonna be so infuriating i know but i'm know. here for it and i think they're gonna use a lot of that old footage oh, i think we're gonna sure. start off the season looking at footage directly from last year yep it's gonna be frustrating it's gonna be cobbled together but i'm just glad to be home in the dumpster <laughs> with everybody watching sister me Wars. too it's been so long all right let's get into welcome to plathville season six episode <sighs> nine yeah entitled that's what walls are for oh okay a la kim plath yeah that was so weird oh we'll my get into it god well, well there's only been it. like there's only three things that happen in this episode yeah olivia and lydia go speed dating and i'm a snorri nobody cares at all um the whole plath family is under one roof that mariah rented in some airbnb or something some booty ass tampa airbnb but all right yeah for her um music video for her album <laughs> and then the whole family minus kim is at the recording studio with mariah and then mariah and ethan do a a duet together yes that's basically it yep but the whole olivia and lydia speed dating thing yeah i'm like why do we need to see this if you have a whole ass boyfriend i feel like we're saying that every single week i just don't understand these produced scenes with olivia and her sister lydia grace (sighs) which It's just filling time yeah it's just eating up the minutes are we really learning anything that's authentic that's interesting absolutely not i don't need to see these 
lame dudes sitting across from you from North Dakota and whatever. <laughs> We're so having lame. Having these stupid conversations. I've done that enough in my youth. Oh my I don't God. need to watch you do it, Olivia. And for what? Just so that she can have an interstitial in which she addresses the camera and talks about Brandon. Brandon. And how much better Brandon actually <laughs> is. I mean, we're only just talking and stuff. But I love how he's so sexually liberated. <laughs> and none of these guys that I'm speed dating right now because production is making us, mm-hmm. none of these guys can hold a candle to Brandon. Of course. And then we can hear more about how Olivia is so dorky and quirky, quirky and unique. I love to go to museums. I'm a nerd. I like to read books. I love to go to spelling bees. Like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm doing? not like other girls. Oh my god. I literally hate it. But I did find it interesting, the interactions between Lydia Grace and Olivia, because I think, in my opinion, I think Lydia hates Olivia. I feel like they don't like each other. I feel like Lydia is making jabs at her. Olivia makes jabs at, at her back. It's super weird. And I think Lydia's low-key a little bitter that Olivia breaks out of this marriage, seven-year-long marriage, and she's not even, like, having fun, being single. She immediately goes for some weirdo on the East Coast mm-hmm. and is, like, so sprung over him and his pink shirt. Mm-hmm. We'll get to it. And his noodle arms. His noodle Lily. arms. Noodle arms and the pink shirt. I love Doesn't a pink shirt. Doesn't go to gym. Sh- I love a pink shirt on a man. Oh, I love a pink shirt, too. Okay. But- yes. All right. But I mean, like, he needs to work out. <laughs> okay, not everybody goes to the Planet Fitness, <laughs> Beatrice, okay? She works out. I do. No, I'm just... But I mean... Okay. Like, from his arms compared to Ethan's arms. Right. Like, you know what I mean? That's what I'm... I, not to body change. Easton, <laughs> not Easton, but um, Ethan's Easton. got that bubble butt, Exactly. Too, and those wranglers and everything. That's what I'm saying. He's got a bod that he's working with. Maybe Brandon does, too. I don't we know. We just have to see him, but I can just guarantee he's going to be a dud. I think he's going to be so lame. Why is Olivia so sprung? I don't Why is it. Olivia so... Like, take a few years, continue on your therapy journey. Yeah. Continue to work on yourself and try Travel the world and meet men in Italy, meet men in Spain, meet men in Scotland, For honey. Real. Have oh a God. great time yes. and then start thinking about settling down with somebody. But she's already thinking about settling down according to her IGs. Yes, on her IG, she was talking about living with him. Honey. And uh, I'm like, what are we doing? Uh, this is how we know she's not as advanced mm-hmm. as she would like us to believe. Because yes. if she were, and if she had been going to therapy this entire time, and if she was continuing to do therapy, even now, she would know that that is a bad move. And I think yes. we're going to have Lydia Grace next week. I think in the season finale. I'm not sure. I think it's the season finale. I hope Lydia so. Grace is going to say, yeah, she's moving too fast. Like, slow it down. Pump these breaks that's what i'm thinking i feel like lydia's a little annoyed with her because it's like come on dude like we're supposed to be single together like i left my dopey boyfriend you left your dopey husband like let's go and have our hoe face like Mm -hmm. let's live our lives but then there was a comment that lydia made after the speed dating where she's like i want to have like more bookmarks in my pages you know like whatever and olivia was like well that's like called a body count Right. It felt a little shady. S- slut shamey. Yes. Little slut shamey. Yes. There's that um, superiority that we mm-hmm. call out so often with Olivia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there are little glimpses of the actual relationship between these two sisters. Now, I don't know if Lydia Grace hates her, but I do wonder why she's agreeing to come and do these scenes other than for the paycheck and she's for the fame. Paid. Yeah. That would be the only... It's not a huge paycheck, though, mm, honey. No. It's the fame. Yep. And... I'm bored. I'm so bored. I don't believe it. It's, it's so un- fake. Believable. But we get to see her boyfriend, Olivia's boyfriend, in Sedona next week. Next week. Woohoo! So we get to have an actual read on him. Oh, we are going to read that boy. <laughs> We're going to read that boy. I'm sorry. You have a wait. lot to compare to because, I mean, we're talking about Ethan Plath. Yeah. <laughs> It's not like it's that much of it's really not. improvement. No, actually, we're going to compare him to her. Yes, because she's a goddess. She's a goddess. She's intelligent. She has a lot of potential. She's dorky. She's dorky and quirky. She's unique. She likes spelling bees. And, and so, Taylor yes, Swift, I'm going to have that monocle out the yes. entire time. 100%. Can we also talk about that throwaway scene with Micah and his girlfriend, Veronica, where they are packing because they are going to be meeting the entire family in Tampa yes. for Mariah's video? <laughs> (laughs) but here again we have this very strange awkward turtle snapshot 
of their relationship in which Veronica seems to be bossing him around and condescending to him about the way that he's folding her dress and and where he is hanging his medal. And I just want to say again for the record, like, please, Micah, run seriously it's not that veronica's a bad person i again say she's very socially awkward at least on camera she just doesn't seem comfortable but the way she treats him and talks to him is shitty and he should not stay in this relationship because it only gets worse from here yep unless you guys go to couples therapy or something and somebody can call her out for how she talks to him but i'm like girl it doesn't matter how he hangs up his shit you guys live together that's part of living with another person you got to get used to all their stuff right everywhere like what are we doing and then in the preview between her and kim plath i'm like this is kim plath 2.0 well yeah coming up against and going head to head with the original kim Plath. like who's gonna win that argument like she's gonna have to back down Mm -hmm. but i think we're gonna see her nature i mean her facial expressions i'm like you're giving attitude this is your potential mom-in-law at some point and it's not like you should always defer to your mom-in-law although you should yeah you should i do you don't i do (laughs) (laughs) no but i mean like you know that's just it takes time to have a relationship with this very important person in your life and it's just it seems kind of weird yeah oh yeah like they're battling for power already oh yeah but in this scene with micah veronica saying how much she loves the plaths how she thinks all of them emphasis on all every single one is a good person beautiful people beautiful Beautiful people people. beautiful people beautiful people people. she loves them she's met them a million times and kim a couple episodes ago was talking about how she loves veronica and so my raccoon brain just goes immediately we astral travel we remote view right to la and i wonder what olivia's thinking as she's watching that on the television she's so jealous she's seeing this girl take pains to say that this family is actually great i actually really love this family Mm -hmm. because the only person who had such a huge problem was olivia that's what the subtext is yes is that olivia hated all these people but why but i mean it's true though like she did mm-hmm. hate them like why mm-hmm. because you hate your own family olivia if you're listening well uh, there's a lot that they did wrong but we don't have to I go guess. backwards we're not going backwards uh, oh <laughs> god <laughs> and then we have all of the family at this weird airbnb for mariah's music video Honey. It's Kim and her sugar body there first with Isaac and Mariah. <laughs> Barry and Ethan come by later. Yep. And then the others come by at some point. Mercy and Cassie are somewhere at friend's house. I don't care. Right. But Kim's there. She sure is. She takes the master bedroom. She does. Listen, let's start right here. Please. I'm out of sorts here. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just compelled to say like, Kim, if I were you, Okay. After I threw a whole grenade into Uh the center of this family and I destroyed the structure that they had come to depend upon and I hurt these little kids and I hurt this man, I hurt these kids. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be like, well, what about me? Like, I've got my stuff in the bedroom already. Like Ramona Singer, like I get the best bedroom. I wouldn't be giving Barry attitude after I cheated on him and slept with the drunk and racist Ken Palmer (laughs) and crashed my car into a tree okay (laughs) yeah i would not um ignore barry as he's trying to make polite conversation over breakfast she's just completely not even saying a word to him like she's pissed at him i even wrote you i'm like but why like why do you hate him so much why aren't you ingratiating yourself to all of these people that you destroyed you yeah you destroyed these people and ethan even calls that out because he's like, I don't even know how my parents are doing it, but I think it's really awesome that they're like trying to be cordial and they're in the same house because if it was me and Olivia, it would be toxic. It would be terrible. And he's like, he said something very poignant. He's like, after everything I've heard, I don't know how my dad is doing it. Hmm. And I'm like, ooh, that means Barry's telling the kids, the older kids. Yeah. Yeah. Your mom's a cheating ass hoe. Well, and he also reads the U.S. Sun. Okay? Yeah. He also reads peoplefucking.com. Yeah, probably. So he knows his mom got a DUI. He knows his mom is with Ken Palmer. He's also probably up on Reddit where all the sleuths are finding Ken Palmer's Facebook and all mm-hmm. of his racist posts. He has already seen his mother's mugshot. Yeah. And he was one of the eldest. So he had most of the years in with this woman 
preaching all the time how, about how he should act and what he should do and who he should turn out to be as a man. So he, he's one of the kids who has the right to be the most pissed off. Oh, totally. That's why I don't understand Kim's position here. There's like no humility. None at all. It's really crazy to see. I'm like, why are you treating Barry so fucking poorly? Maybe... There's some shit we don't know in their divorce negotiations. I think that's what it is. Like, it's got to be something like that. Like, he's probably fighting for... I think we read an article a couple weeks ago about custody, right? Yes. So let's break this down. Because at the time that this is being filmed, it looks like it's winter yeah. of either 2023 or 2024. Mm-hmm. Now, Kim did not file for divorce until I think June of 2024. Just a couple, two, three months ago. So they were maybe talking... Maybe they were trying to mediate Mm. and come to some sort of an agreement about who gets what property, who gets a little bit of child support, where do the kids get to live. And maybe those conversations are kind of falling through. Wasn't Mm. there something that Barry said about making Olivia wait? For the divorce papers with Ethan. Yes. Yeah. Making it, making him wait so that way you guys could figure everything out or something like that. But he like had that. like a wicked little gleam in his he eyes. Did. Like, yeah, just make her wait. It's yeah. okay. As if that's exactly what he's doing with maybe. Kim as well. So maybe he's like playing some games and or just not giving Kim what she wants. Honestly, good. 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 I love it. Good. She ruined the family. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah. Fuck this bitch. I think that's why she's pissed right now. Probably. In these scenes. And the fact that she doesn't file for actual divorce, I think for six months after these scenes, and then we saw his response to her petition in which he is asking for primary custody of the littles plus child support. Love it. I'm wondering how he wants to split everything. I just wish I had more details. That's why, though. That's why she's pissed. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And she feels like he's not owed any of that. She probably wants a lot. Honestly, I, th- I couldn't put it past Kim Plath mm-hmm. wanting child support, alimony, one half of the rental properties or more. Like she's probably asking for a lot. Right. And Barry's like, fuck you. Mm-hmm. And he's like a smart guy. He's not stupid. So he's probably playing the cool, calm, collected little cucumber over there, just playing chess with her. And she's just drinking. <laughs> and she's drinking and she's trying to heal her relationships with her children whereas her children just flock to Barry yeah and he's like the number one parent and she's seeing all of this Mm -hmm. and so yeah that's why she's eating that sugar drinking that booze and making that breakfast as hard as she can oh my my gosh I loved how Mariah like once Barry came in she immediately offers the master bedroom Mm -hmm. I'm like damn yeah you got some balls to just do that in front of your mom but like that just shows the where the kids are at with Kim but then we have Mariah with Kim talking about her alopecia so I'm like okay like maybe you are having a good relationship with your mom I thought Kim handled that pretty okay I do as well I think Mariah is trying to regain a new relationship Mm. with Kim and so she's giving her these opportunities to be there for her I wouldn't be surprised if she also had similar conversations with Barry and shared with him how she's feeling about herself but I did think that this particular scene was poignant and meaningful and I think Kim did the best that she can do as a venomous uh, narcissist to get out of her own way and show up for her daughter somewhat like I saw some wetness in her eyes Mm -hmm. I guess I know her eyeliner was smudged I saw that (laughs) and I'm making light of it I think she loves Mariah yeah I think she doesn't necessarily know how to mom like that yeah, I don't think it she does It feels either. like she's uncomfortable a little bit mm-hmm. and she's trying the best that she can in the moment. Yeah, I think she's like everybody else in the family, uncomfortable with vulnerability. I think she just doesn't know how to like be empathetic. Maybe that's from her narcissistic tendencies, probably. But I thought she handled it pretty good. I thought she was like trying to comfort her and she was telling Mariah that she's so beautiful and mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. And I felt really bad for Mariah losing all her fucking hair. Yeah, I thought it was brave of Mariah, who yeah. is objectively a beautiful young lady to sit on that bed and allow the camera to kind of pan around and show these alopecia bald spots yeah. on her. 
head and like to be so open about her struggle. And of course, she's connecting her alopecia in specific to heartbreak. And yeah. she's identified that when she feels heartbroken, that's when she has like her body has this response of, of shedding hair. She had some of this when she broke up with Max, but it wasn't a lot. Yeah, I think the first time she lost all of her hair was after Joshua passed because she saw it, right? I think so. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what people are saying online. I don't know if she's like said that outright as the cause, but she said that that's when she lost her hair was like when she was around four and then it didn't come back until she was eight. So I think that's what people are saying is like. Yeah, and I think when she talked about the alopecia, was it last season or whenever it was when we saw like the whole journey? Mm -hmm. I think she might have connected it to Joshua, but I don't recall for sure. I don't remember it either. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, so what this is setting up for the rest of us is that this relationship that she was in with this mystery man who we get into a little bit later Mm -hmm. in the show, like that breakup really affected her and broke her heart. Yeah. It's been a traumatic thing for her to endure. And as a result, she's losing her hair and it's sad. It's actually really sad. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing people coming for Mariah on Instagram and on Reddit and saying she's like a, just a professional victim and she's just making this all like a drama thing. And I'm like, Y'all are heartless. Yeah. Y'all are terrible people because I think she's actually being brave to sit here and cry and show her balding head. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't fucking have alopecia. Right. I'm a Leo. If I lost all this beautiful hair, oh I'd be God. so sad. Yes. What does the Bible say about a woman's hair? It's like the crown of her beauty. It's like just the, the pinnacle. It is. It's what a woman has the vanity in. Like yeah. it's her hair. It can be. Not everybody. But like it can be a very devastating thing to lose your hair or to yes. have a change. Like after I gave birth to my daughter, your wife, I got very sick. Oh my God. I was in a coma. Mm-hmm. I was septic. It was a drag. Yeah. And I ended up losing two thirds of my hair. Oh my God. And I ended up just shaving it not shaving it but like almost cutting it all off and then I dyed it blonde it was a whole thing my then husband was so traumatized (laughs) by my Brigitte Nielsen uh (laughs) new persona wow it was really difficult for me as a very beautiful woman yeah true (laughs) joking no but it was it was it was hard for me as a woman who was attached to the way that I looked in a certain way yeah to suddenly not have that and not know how to deal with that it was really painful it was a huge adjustment for me I ended up cutting it all off and I can see that pain in Mariah too and she's a young girl she's so pretty I mean she is so pretty and I feel bad for her this is obviously taking a toll Mm -hmm. do we want to talk about our relationship right now her relationship with the guy yeah well I just want to yes but before I do I just want to comment and say that I think people are attaching Mariah's persona and her morose and depressed affect to the alopecia and they probably should separate those two things because I do wish Mariah would like maybe take an antidepressant or something and perk up or I don't know (sighs) start getting out in the sunshine honey you're looking like a vampire and stuff and just get out and live life you're young you're beautiful you're free I wish you felt that way because you do seem really really dark a lot of the time totally but that's a separate thing from and so maybe people are associating her with being a victim because of that but the alopecia is a separate thing I agree 100% yeah I'm like this whole album is like super depressing oh also she recently just removed or archived every single post on instagram so she's got like no posts okay i don't know why i don't know what the reason is i think she's also unfollowed a lot of people from the plath family really except for like micah i think what i don't know y'all can fact check me but yeah did she get back with the married man i don't know honey girl interesting yeah So that just recently happened. I don't know if it was like after this episode or before, but I thought that was kind of strange. Yeah. Okay. Well, now let's get to the studio. Yes. (laughs) Where she's recording her album that she's poured her heart and soul into. And it's a letter to her ex. She wants him to listen to it. That killed me. It literally, okay, figuratively killed me because I'm like, don't say that though. You never let them see you sweat, my daughter. I mean, never let them see you sweat. It might be true. You might be writing this for that man, mm-hmm. but you don't want him to know that you need him to listen to it, to Girl. validate how you feel. I cringed so deep into my body. It became a kegel, which we call <laughs> a, a kegel. And it was um, unfortunate, but it's important to her that he does. And that producer 
playing her music and being like, yeah, I really love this song. Yeah. It's a really dope song. Okay. September is like my favorite song on the album. Okay. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> and then she warbles it out. Like they play it. And I'm like, oh, God, I don't want to start cutting, but I might have to. <laughs> oh, my Sorry, God. I'm just so joking. Terrible. Is that terrible? I apologize. But I just like oh my start God. whipping myself like those monks <laughs> with the whips and stuff. Like in like the just, Da Vinci Code. Yeah, it's like a fucking religious sacrifice I'm making to listen to your music, it's Mariah. so bad and the producer being like yeah it's got good bones like we need to fix okay, the vocals we need to fix that we need to get some auto tune in there but yeah it's got good bones good song just really like, please can someone be honest with mariah no they can't be please. because they don't know of good music like these uh, kids didn't come up with a bunch of great music they didn't have exposure to motown honey they don't know anything about marvin <laughs> Gaye or anything and so all she's doing maybe she picked up like a paramore record or a flyleaf record and she's like oh my god i'm so inspired and now here we have mariah but i it's mean bad it's and just then she gets Ethan up to sing, but before that happens, because yes. as they're talking about the song that she's intentionally playing for them so that they will hear it, yes, they start talking about the inspiration for the song, which is that bum ass dude, mm -hmm. and she gets overcome with emotion, <laughs> which is the professional victim part I think people call out. Yeah, a little bit. And so she has to, I have to leave, I have to leave the room right now. And so then she leaves and everybody has a conversation and we get down to the nitty gritty about this guy because I've been calling it all season. Yep. I've been telling you all, have mm -hmm. you been listening? This man is a married man. 100%. This man Randall has Emmett. a whole wife. He probably has some kids and stuff. And he does. And here we learn that that's exactly what's going on. Which is just amazing to me. I mean, I'm just so great. I mean, not great for Mariah. Like, it's pretty sad. That's what it sounded like you were no, saying. No, it's okay. just like, it's funny because we called it. Yeah. Like, we've been saying it. Like, it's Randall Emmett. I mean, it's totally. What kind of TV could we have made if you just said that at the top? And I then we, mean... like, worked through the shit through the oh. whole season. Oh. Come on. I mean. Dig deep. Aim high. Nine episodes of her cryptic ass being mm -hmm. like, yeah, it was such a horrible, traumatic heartbreak. And everybody's guessing. And mm -hmm. everybody. I mean, Reddit's been calling it, too. It's yeah. like, girl, why didn't we just say it? I mean, and her leaving the room and the producer leaving the room felt super staged to me. Yes. It felt like TLC was like, yeah, leave the room, be all dramatic so that way the family can talk about it so we can, you know, propel the narrative. Mm -hmm. And Barry's just talking about how he's a master deceiver. He met him once, thought he was a stand-up guy. But then I'm like, how can you say that if this guy didn't want to meet the rest of the family? Like refused to meet her brothers, refused to be around her. I don't know. It seemed very strange to me. So it sounded like... He would set up dates with Mariah, according to Veronica, and then cancel them at the last mm -hmm. minute after she got all dressed up or that she would have her expectations up and then he would dash them because he had a whole wife and because he couldn't get away from his whole family. And she had no idea because she's a young woman and mm -hmm. she doesn't have the worldly experience no, of a battle doesn't. axe like me. I would have called that in three <laughs> seconds. I would For have real. tapped her at the bar where they were talking and be like, honey, he's married. Yeah. He's married. Seriously. But she doesn't know. No, and that's the fault of Barry and Kim. Like, you raised these kids to be so fucking naive. Like, they don't know anything about the world. And now they're out here getting their hearts broken. Mm -hmm. It's all your fault. I, we got Micah with Veronica. Veronica. These kids are making bad choices for themselves. Terrible choices. Barry and Kim. Yep. Yeah. Very, very unfortunate. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, mm. because I could have swore. I could have swore we saw a preview, a season preview of some sort of an event yes, and an implication that this mystery guy, the devil in a suit and tie, shows up to her performance yeah. or something. Yeah. Um, but if next episode is the season finale, are they going to give us that or are they not? Maybe it's not the season finale. Maybe that's wrong information. I checked again. There's no episode beyond next week. I don't know. There isn't. And it kind of feels like it's going to be the season finale because we have her big lead up to her music video. I feel like that's we're gonna, what we're going to end on. Is that maybe a weird proposal between Micah and Veronica? Oh, which no. Which would be a bad idea. Yeah. A terrible idea. And yeah. then Olivia and her soft boyfriend in Sedona. <laughs> her soft boyfriend. Oh, my gosh. Oh, He's so probably mean. a musician. 
Um, no, not a musician. Okay, what do we think he does? Doubt. Something with computers. He probably seems, IT or something. Or creative, though. I I don't know. I think he's might maybe a creative person. He probably wants to be on TV. He's probably yeah. a fucking actor. Dude. I think he's a clout goblin. He's probably a clout goblin. Yes. He's probably got facial hair, but inappropriate. Not like yes. lumberjack, handsome. No. Sons of like anarchy. Too much. Yeah. No, he's probably just got like he can't even grow a beard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And you can probably, more chest hair but not a yeah, facial hair yeah. patchouli yeah. patchouli wearing motherfucker <laughs> yeah i can't you wait i can't i do i can't wait to see this guy <laughs> me too oh but yeah no i remember that scene mm-hmm. in a preview so we better get to see this guy yeah I, I would like to put a pin in it yeah um but that is not the end of the episode because no. of course the end of the episode is micah and ethan because they are doing a collaboration mariah and ethan sorry mariah <laughs> i can't keep it together mariah and ethan yeah sing together Mm -hmm. and we can talk about the singing and the quality thereof but it was the comment that ethan made to the camera in which he says it's it's really cool to be able to sing with my family i wasn't able to do that i'm paraphrasing i wasn't able to do that because olivia mocked my family's music because they had their christian traveling band yep i would have been mocking that too i mean i would have been mocking that too in my heart i don't know if i had said it out loud yes but apparently olivia mocked the family traveling band and told ethan outright that he couldn't sing which is pretty mean it's entirely mean. like that's so fucking mean it's a hundred percent mean like we can have a debate on whether or not she's right (laughs) but (laughs) i feel like he's got a good voice do you I mean, like in a Johnny Cash type of a way. No. Like an off-brand Johnny Cash type of it a way. It seems like he's trying to sound like Johnny Cash. Well, and like... I don't think he's anywhere near Johnny Cash. But maybe like if he had encouragement and like support and he could have practiced at home, like maybe he could have gotten better. Maybe. Or maybe Olivia was like your dad who said, I'm sorry, Beatrice, but you're never going to make it. You're never going to be a star. Well, but my dad didn't tell me I was a bad singer because I'm not... I'm a good singer. Right, right, right. Like he was just saying, you're not going to be famous because that's a long shot. Right. Like don't put your all, all your eggs in one basket and being a pop star. Well, maybe she was just trying to adjust his expectations. Mm. But at the end of the day, that's a mean thing to say. And you mm. can tell by the way that Ethan is relaying this information that it was very hurtful to him at the time. Yeah. In fact, he stopped singing for six years. That's so sad. He's only picked up his guitar in the last year so he could write these unaliving songs, which are really depressing Yikes. and dark. Yeah. But you, you got to get it out somehow, Ethan. I mean, well, and both him and Mariah, I thought it was interesting. They both talk about how music is so therapeutic for them. And I think that's like a good thing. Like, even if you're bad, that's great. Like, if you have an outlet to like sing your sad songs or like, you know, just get it out. I think that's awesome. I'm a musician. I love music. Music's always been my therapy. So like, I get it. Yeah, but Mariah has the added layer of Delulu, where she thinks that people are going to want to buy her music and or come to her live performance and some of us will because we're in a dumpster eating yeah, trash and totally. we're going to want to see mariah plath singing her warbling songs but we're not there because we think she's a fantastic musician yeah no but i admire the creative process she needs to go to college yeah or like get some vocal lessons no just go to college <laughs> or go to a trade school and study become what become a welder where you can make <laughs> an actual plath, a welder something you get a trade, honey. Go to Job Corps. I I'm mean, just saying. This is not it. No. I mean, yeah. Like, you can't make a career out of it. That's why my dad told me. <laughs> don't but don't were, be a pop star. But you were like eight. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And I still made music. <laughs> I still play instruments. But, yeah. So, Ethan and Mariah sing. They do her du- their duet. And it's fine. I was sick of it. it was, I was sick yeah. of all the music because I had to listen to September. I had to hear some yeah. other song as well. Now I'm listening to these two Hitler youth singing into oh a microphone. God. I just want to, I want to go. I'm over the show. It was so awkward, Make too. Make it stop. It was so awkward. And they do one take and the producer's like, yeah, that was great. So awesome. I think we got it. <laughs> Can you leave now? <laughs> like that producer is doing them such a disservice. Yeah, it was awesome. We got it. Was it. So good. Okay. Amazing vocals. God. But I mean, again, I admire their creative process. That's great. Okay. I don't like that everybody's bullying Mariah for her bad music online, <laughs> even though that's what we're kind of doing. But like, maybe that's why she deleted all of her shit. Mm. Or 
she deleted all of her stuff in preparation for the album that's launch. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Like a lot of artists do they that, They do right? that, yeah. They will delete their whole thing and then they'll come back with like a new branded yeah. page. That's thing probably what it is. Colors and like music. Yeah. Well, live your best life, Mariah. That's I'm rooting great. for you. Just perk up a little bit. Please. Oh, my God. I need to be one of those terrible people that tells girls to smile. So I'm not <laughs> going to. But I'm just like, if you could just try. Like, she even dogs therapy a little bit. She's like, I mean, I don't think therapy is going to help me. It's songwriting. But if I did go to therapy, I would immediately go home and write a song about it. I'm like, actually, you really need therapy, You though. probably should go you to could therapy. You really stand to go to therapy every single week. There's a lot you need to work through. And if you did, maybe you'd smile. I mean... God, maybe that's something that their parents parroted to them. I mean, maybe mm. their parents were like, yeah, no, you don't need therapy. It's all right. whack jobs. Okay, it's all Kim, stupid. the online naturopath. I mean, for real. <laughs> Kim Plath, the drunk. Right. <laughs> like, telling her Let kids. Let me fix your alopecia. <laughs> Let me get up on the website. Yeah. Seriously. This family's cray cray. They're whack. But that's like what I love about this show. And so I'm getting kind of frustrated the last several episodes have been so produced yeah. and fake. It feels like the TLC producers are telling them, like, mm -hmm. this is what we should do now. Mm -hmm. We should do these fake storylines. I don't know why they'd go that way. We talked about this last week. I am greatly displeased yeah. if they continue to do that. I mean, I don't know that we continue to watch Beatrice. I mean, I'm probably going to watch. I'm, we're probably going to watch. we're not going to cover it. We don't it. necessarily need to cover yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Unless they can get into the, the good stuff. Yes. Which they haven't done. No, they haven't. But we have the preview for next week. Okay. Soy Boy and Olivia oh in Sedona. Oh my God, you are coming so, so hard. You have so much grace I'm for so Mariah. Mean. You have so much grace for Mariah, but like Olivia gets nothing, nothing. from you. <laughs> no <Nothing>. dust <laughs> from you. Well, I mean, Olivia's very beautiful and Sedona's Who great. Who cares if she's beautiful? <laughs> That's all you and ever She's a talented her. photographer. She has nothing to do with her own beauty. Yes, she does. Well, I mean, but I'm saying like she was born with it. Oh, yeah. Okay, anyway. Go yeah. On. Anyway. Go on. Sedona. Sedona, special guest. It's her boyfriend. I'm excited to see him and yeah. judge him for everything that he's got to offer. Me too. Veronica and Kim Plath have a little power struggle, which is very interesting to me. Because I don't know why Veronica would have so much attitude mm -hmm. to Kim fucking Plath. Because she's got a lot of attitude. She's the girl with a lot of attitude. She really is. And then we have Mariah's music video where she's wearing a wedding dress or something in a bar. Mm -hmm. Like, what are we doing? I don't know. Were you going to get married to this guy? I think we're cringing. I think that's what we're doing. I can't wait to see it, though. I think we're reality TV cringing. Yes. Yes. I'm actually excited to see that. Me as well. Yeah. I don't know if it is the finale, but it either kind of way, like what we have to tell y'all is yeah. that our schedule is going to be a little different next week because, of course, we have Sister Wives coming back on Sunday. Yep. Um, she works full time every single day. It is so hard to get her to visit her mother-in-law. It is <laughs> so hard. Like she can only come like one night a week. Yeah. And so um, we're going to start recording on Tuesdays, which means yeah. we are going to release content, I think, Wednesdays and Thursdays. Yeah. So next week, we're not going to be able to cover Welcome to Plathville, only Sister Wives. I know so you we'll guys have... are so sad about yeah. that. <laughs> Stop. Cry, cry harder. <laughs> um, so we'll only have Sister Wives next week. And yeah. then the week after that, we'll have Sister Wives and the finale, I think, of Welcome to Plathville. I hope so. And then after that, I think we're starting 90 Day Fiance. Yeah. We're trying to work that out with yeah. her very busy schedule. Okay? You sound resentful. I'm not resentful <laughs> at all. Um, but is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons, Beatrice? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope and plead that you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review. <laughs> it really helps us grow the pod so we can get fatter. We yes. really appreciate it. Thank you. Now you better make sure I want you to put it in your calendar, girl. Put it Cal in your calendar. Cal then we're going to be back next week to talk about the season premiere My God. of Sister Wives season 19. Yes, We're going to get into every single knit and grit, into the nitty and the gritty yes. of that show. And we want to do that with you. Until then, however, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you and peace.